Welcome to Pure Brews America. Join us as we travel across Michigan to discover the amazing stories, people, and places that make up the craft beer and spirits industry. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Pure Brews America. I'm Kiera and this is Lisa, and we've got a lot of fun in store for you today. We sure do. So let's get the show started with our first story. We knew from the beginning that we were going to be small and that in order to differentiate, we had to do much different things. So we were going to have to be experimental and it's just a natural merge of experimenting with fermentation. We're 80 gallons at a time. So when you talk about breweries in the state, we're probably one of the smallest. So you're getting a lot of hand care in every single one of these brews. So their whole idea is we want to make the most excellent beers we can. They tend to push the boundaries and push the envelope in terms of what they do and they're just always experimenting. We're dorks here, so we, we serve our beer in beakers. The beer is really unique and really different and really good. Pink Tickler is one of those original ones that we did uh, back in the club days, and it's been our best seller from the beginning. It's, it's one of those things that's visually unique, the flavor is unique, it's not like any other beer you'd find on the market. Kakahayaka Onu is a Kona coffee stout, a lot of people have those, but we get really good ratings and feedback from that one. And the other one that's pretty popular that we keep around a lot is Clown Clownpocalypse, which is a toasted coconut cream ale. We like to try out different things, so one of our beers is Trey Winey, so it's a Belgian triple brewed with Pinot Noir. So we're trying to pull flavors from different areas to try to make the best beer we can. Pontiac was just such a beautiful downtown. I mean, it's got the old buildings, the brick facades, and when we saw this place in particular with the exposed brick and the hardwood floors, we thought that this is the place that we have to be. It's a very, like, just low-key, chill place to hang out. You can bring your kids here, play retro video games, just hang out and have a great time. And we offer quite a few unique things that a lot of places don't have all at the same time, so we only listen to vinyl here. Board games are a big pull as well. We have a board game night once a week on Wednesday night so a lot of people come out for that too. There's really no place like this with this kind of ambiance, this kind of feel. I mean you look around and you see the artwork is just visually arresting and, and the way that they have everything set up I feel like they put a lot of attention to detail here so to me it's like that's that's the attention to quality and, and excellence that you know just shines through in everything they do from the way it looks to the way it tastes to the way it feels you know. We stopped by New Holland Brewing Company to find out about one of the most creative recycling programs in the craft beer industry. New Holland loves to reuse as much as they can, which led us to their Barrel Works project, where they take old oak barrels and turn them into works of art. Right now I'm just deconstructing barrels that we use for our Dragon Smoke program and making a lot of different products out of them. Uh, tap handles, openers, furniture, and then everything else that the pub needs. So we've got signs, we've got... Beach chairs, beach tables. I'll do full barrels with the top on it for tables. Did a lot of lighting for the Knickerbocker in Grand Rapids. Cool. Um, some shelving there, and I'm still pretty busy with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Brett Vanderkamp really kind of respects art and really has a value for it, so... And that's kind of why I'm still here. I think it really sets you guys apart from any other distillery I've been to. I don't, I've never seen a workshop within a distillery. Yeah, me neither. Especially something kind of as kind of quirky as this. It's more of an art studio than a wood shop. Um, just lots of inspiration kind of hanging around, and just lots of fun stuff going on. I have to ask you your name, Coop. Is it short for Cooper? Nope. Uh, no affiliation with my name at all. Um, started with... What's your name? My name is Steve. <laughs> hey, Steve. Everyone knows me as Coop. Um, it's always been Coop since I've been here. But yeah, a person who builds a barrel is a Cooper. Oh, cool. So I was kind of deconstructing barrels. So I was the anti-Cooper, then just Cooper, then just Coop. And then we got name tags and it was Coop. And now I don't think anyone really knows my real name. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Pure Brews America. We'll be right back.
When you graduate from Northwestern Tech, heating and cooling companies take notice. And getting noticed is nice, but even better when it comes with respect. With the demand for HVAC techs and the type of money you can make in this industry, skilled tradespeople are getting the respect that they deserve. Hands-on training, experienced instructors, and thousands of Northwestern Tech graduates. In just 10 and a half months, you can have the career and the respect you deserve. Northwestern Tech, the HVAC school that works. Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's. Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. We've been doing this fundraiser for about four years, and it's the easiest and best and most profitable fundraiser they have in Michigan. Go to DoughRaiser.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Pure Brews America is back, so let's get to it. Every year, the Michigan Brewers Guild hosts four great events throughout the state. They have the Winter Beer Festival in February, the Summer Beer Festival in July, the UP Fall Beer Festival in September, and the Detroit Fall Beer Festival the following month. The key to their success, besides the vast selection of incredible brews, is the passionate and dedicated volunteer group that make these festivals happen. These are people who do it just for their sheer love of doing it. You know, they're not making money. Like, they take time off of work to come out here and do this. It just wouldn't work without them. I don't think you could even count the number of volunteer hours and the number of people that have stepped up to make it great. You have a lot of people working hard, selflessly, to make a great time for, for thousands of people. I got involved in 2001, and I went to that first one in Ipsy, and I said, I like this, I like the people, and I can see room for improvement, let alone getting involved and I just put out some feelers and pretty much got sucked in there. We have a core group of about eight or ten rock solid people that have been doing this for the last 10 or 15 years. The amount of work that gets done behind the scenes are incredible. They're so into it and they're so good at what they do handling specific tasks. We've kind of improved from working with go-karts and hand delivering the kegs and now we have them on skids and we move them out with forklifts. So we've, we've improved the technology over the years and we've really turned it into kind of a science to how efficiently we become at it. You know, a thousand beers is a lot of beers to move. Last night it got cold enough that we couldn't leave the beers out, so all of them had to go back into the shed. My team is most of the grounds organization. The layout of all the brewery tables, physically putting tables up, all of the banners, all of the hops, the flags, and then a whole lot of traffic management and just making sure that everything is flowing. Most of the grounds organization. What we do is all the tents and um, portable toilets and tables and chairs for many festivals across the state, but we do all the Michigan Brewers Guild. It's kind of my little niche because I love Michigan beer, so I've kind of put my heart and soul into trying to get my tents to all the brewers in the state. We do the Marquette, we do the Detroit, Ypsilanti in here. Scott Graham, Eric Brigerman, they do an awesome job, and we feel real fortunate just to be part of it. Everyone has a role that they have to do, and everyone does it incredibly well. That's kind of the secret to everything. Like, we all trust each other to do the job right. It just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's so hard to keep up with, but it's so exciting. It's so awesome. Legacy is definitely part of it. We try and, you know, pass the torch as we can, because, again, this is a long, ongoing process. It's going to involve, it already involves decades. And, you know, if everything in Michigan goes well, with the brewing community many decades to come. Let's drink Michigan beer from coast to coast, from far to near. It's local and delicious. Any styles that you wishes. Raise your glass and toast your friends. Let's drink Michigan beer. 
Let's settle up and head over to Draft Horse Brewery in Lyon Township. Honestly, we kind of have a country theme, but if you walk in on any given day, it's just going to be lively. There could be classic rock, country music going, a lot of beer getting poured, and happy people. But we have core beers, so we have like our Foundation IPA, our, our Totally Blonde, the Pelham Pale, 18 hand stout, a lot of them are horse related. But then we have uh, some semi cores like our Revere Red and the Chocolate Peanut Butter Stout, which was getting a lot of fame out there at the festivals. And a lot of people will drive here specifically for that. So we try to keep that on tap almost all the time. And then we have two brew systems. So we're always trying to rotate through. We get a lot of compliments that it's like a new brewery every time they come in. And if there didn't happen to be something that they were really into, they could go back to one of our cores because those are always on tap. My wife and I have some uh, two draft horses at our house that we ride. We always ride with beer. It, it was a natural fit to name it draft horse, but you notice that the draft is spelled like the old English draft beer. Uh, just kind of the play on words there. So Draft Horse Brewery was born before we ever even had a business plan. With my horses, we'll have them down at the hitching post because if you didn't notice, we have a couple of hitching posts for people to ride their horses up and have a beer on. We had some pictures and I have a Percher on and a Clydesdale. And uh, we've gotten a couple of cease and desists from uh, Anheuser-Busch uh, regarding having any sort of draft horse pictures associated with them the brewery, you try to explain to them that they're my personal horses and they don't care and they have some very deep pockets so we had to remove a lot of the pictures of horses. Frankly, I don't really see a correlation. I don't think there's going to be any brand confusion but again, we don't want to go up against the big guy. So. We'll have more great stories and tasty craft beverages when Pure Brews America returns. For over 10 years, Black Lotus Brewing Company in downtown Clawson has brewed craft beer with soul and passion, served with love and appreciation. Black Lotus also offers the finest craft spirits, specialty wines, food, and live music. And now, our 2016 World Beer Cup gold medal winning Ninja Pirate is available to go and buy the case. Black Lotus Brewing, interesting times call for interesting beers. The engine of Detroit has never been idle. Every day steam rises from the Motor City Underground. Each drop of Detroit steam vodka is handcrafted with the same passion that went into the foundation of this city. We will not falter in our dedication to bring you a product that embodies the spirit of Detroit. This is Detroit Steam Vodka. Back again. You know me. Pepperoni Asiago. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. What's his name? Pepperoni Asiago. <laughs> I just want to eat him up. <laughs> Flavor fanatics love us because we make our dough fresh daily and only use 100% real mozzarella. Now get meal deals for any budget. Hungry? Howie! Flavor fanatics welcome. Michigan is full of amazing craft breweries and this is the place on the east side of the state that you can come and taste everything. We have 66 beers on tap. They change daily. I come here once, maybe twice a week since they've started making their homebrew, enjoying that as well. The beer's good, the food's really good. Our chef specializes in barbecue food. Phenomenal food here that we make from scratch every day. You need the two to complement each other, the food and the beer. Try something new and discover beer here. We're back. Thanks for watching Pure Brews America. It's time to meet more fascinating people in the craft beer world. Grand Rapids, Michigan earned the title Beer City USA in two consecutive nationwide polls in 2012 and 2013. USA Today further validated the city's craft brewing leadership by naming it America's best beer town in 2014 and best beer scene in 2016. All this recent acclaim might make it seem that Grand Rapids is a relatively newcomer in the world of craft beer. 
but the roots of the local craft brewing scene extend back 180 years to 1836 when an Englishman named John Panel built a small single barrel brewery in what would one day become downtown Grand Rapids. Panel later teamed up with German immigrant Christoph Kusterer, who brought German lagers to the city. Customer City Brewery was one of the four major breweries operating in Grand Rapids at the end of the Civil War in 1865. Several non-German brewers tried to crack the early Grand Rapids markets, but their ales and porters did not catch on. The city had seven breweries in 1879, and they were all German lager producers. By the 1880s, Anheuser-Busch constructed an ice house here to aid in local distribution. That structure still stands downtown, and it's now the home of Grand Rapids Community Foundation. In response to this new competition, four local German breweries joined together to form Grand Rapids Brewing Company. Grand Rapids Brewing became famous for its silver foam lager. Its popularity helped the brewery grow into several block complex with a large bottling facility, an auditorium, and apartments. At the height of its success, Grand Rapids Brewing was producing 250,000 barrels of beer each year. That ended with the start of Prohibition. Grand Rapids Brewing and other local breweries either closed or shifted operations to other areas. Several new breweries tried to make a go of it after Prohibition, but the last one closed in 1951, kicking off a long dry spell for local beer lovers. Thirsts were finally quenched in 1997 when a pair of college classmates opened Canal Street Brewing. Today, that brewery is known as Founders Brewing Company and is recognized as one of the planet's biggest and best craft brewers. Since then, more than 40 additional breweries have opened on the Beer City Ale Trail, including a new Grand Rapids Brewing Company, which has recreated the classic silver foam lager for a new generation. From its humble beginnings over 180 years ago to its current global acclaim, the Grand Rapids beer scene has always inspired a passionate following. Today, fans from far and wide are becoming Beer City Brewsaders, traveling from one Grand Rapids brewery to the next with their Beer City passports in hand to earn a collectible t-shirt and the envy of all their friends. There are even more breweries and beer styles on the way to Grand Rapids in the future, so stay tuned for the next chapter in the rich and colorful history of Grand Rapids beer. What's better than craft beer and a great meal? A great meal made with craft beer, of course. Check out this amazing recipe. Hey, I'm Chris. And I'm Gary, and we're from Hopcat. And today, we're gonna make beer bar cheese. Start off, we're gonna be using some cream cheese that we left out for about an hour, just to let it get soft and warm. Then we're gonna mix in our horseradish. What kind of cheese we got here? Uh, we're gonna start off with blue cheese. Ooh. All right, next we're gonna add our ground mustard. Got a little half and half here, and Worcestershire. Lastly, we're gonna add in our roasted garlic. Ooh. I'm gonna use some Founders Porter for this one. All right, so we're gonna mix this real quick. Uh, we wanna make sure it's nice and smooth uh, before we put the rest of our cheese in. So about how long on the mixer? It'll be about five minutes. All right, Gary, I think we're done now. What? I think we're done now. I can't hear you. We're done. All right, next we're gonna add in our mixed cheese here. Is this uh, just a mix of cheddar, Colby Jack, a little mozzarella, right on. I'll let Chris uh, get this thing mixed up. All right, Gary, looks like the beer cheese is ready to go. Cheers. And that's how you make beer cheese. There's more Pure Brews America coming up, so stick around. We don't frost brew our beer, and hot chicks won't appear if you drink it. Our beer doesn't come in a bow tie shaped can or need color indicators to tell you it's cold. It won't be delivered by Clydesdale horses, and to tell you the truth, we aren't the most interesting people in the world. Fact of the matter is, we don't tell stories. We just let our beer do the talking. At Yellow Flag Productions, we do more than just create great content for our clients. We bring groundbreaking visual and audio quality to meet all your media needs. TV and video production, social media development, multi-channel marketing, live video streaming, and podcast.
podcasts. Our reputation speaks for itself with six Michigan Emmy Awards. For more information, visit yellowflagproductions.com. Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's. Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. This fundraiser has been awesome for our squad. We've made a lot of money, very easy to do, it's very quick to do, and it's very effective. Go to doughraiser.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Their whole idea is we want to make the most excellent beers we can. They tend to push the boundaries and they're just always experimenting. Well, you're getting a lot of hand care in every single one of these brews. The beer is really unique and really different and really good. There's really no place like this with this kind of ambiance. They put a lot of attention to detail here. So to me, it's like that's the attention to quality and, and excellence that just shines through in everything they do from the way it looks to the way it tastes to the way it feels. Welcome back to Peer Brews America. We've got another great behind the scenes story for you. Coming here for a couple of years and they have one of the best weight staffs and drinks anywhere in Detroit, Michigan. I'm from Ann Arbor and I always come to Detroit and this is my hangout in Detroit. It's a local like kind of bar as well. But it's unique enough, so it's not just like every other place that you'd go into in town. I can't seem to get away from uh, the bourbon. It's definitely my favorite. Two James Distillery opened their tasting room doors in 2013. But why Detroit? What brought David Landrum, one of the founders of Two James, to this historic Corktown neighborhood? So I actually grew up about four miles that way, uh, west of here. So coming back home was, was a, a big thing for me. But I think what se separates us, obviously we're the first distillery in Detroit since Prohibition. So we we're the first ones to bring this back to you know, my hometown, which feels great. So uh, Two James Spirits, where does the name come from? So when we were deciding uh, what to call this concept that we, you know, was just kind of burning around in our heads, you know, we started throwing out these really cool sounding names. You know, they sound great but they really didn't mean anything. My father had passed away in uh, 2000, really untimely, very young, and the other founder's father had passed away a few years prior to us starting this business. I had asked him, hey, by the way, what was your dad's name? You know, and he said, James. Wow. And I, it was kind of like that Blues Brothers moment with the light shining through. <laughs> you know, I was like, did a backflip and said, two James, right? <laughs> but no, it was, that's what it was. I think I said James and James, and then I said two James, and, and that was it. So that really, on top of it being like a really good bar call, it's two syllables, it's kind of like everything they tell you when you name something to have. So besides that though, it took on a, a whole new meaning because now it's like, oh crap, now everything I do needs to be the best I can do it because it's honoring my father. Staff is fantastic, friendly, bright. They've got great recommendations of places to go if you want to go out to dine or, or you know get a bite to eat. They're just really knowledgeable and very experienced. They have the best cocktails in town. Honestly, they do a great job. The way this guy makes it right here, top notch, one of the best. So Lisa, how so you doing? Andreas, I'm well, how are you? Doing wonderful. I think it's drink time. I think you're ready for it. You've been working hard all day. Let's get started with something. What are we making first? Yeah, we're going to be doing a Sazerac. So traditionally, a Sazerac was invented in New Orleans, uh, always made with rye whiskey, traditionally. So we're going to use our catcher's rye, uh, which has a lot of nice like dried fig, plum notes. It's not your average rye. It's just, it really shines through in a Sazerac. It's cool because we're also going to be using our absinthe. So Ooh. it's sort of like an all-inclusive resort. We have our absinthe and we have our rye. So we're going to start with one Demerara sugar cube, some pastry bitters. So you're just going to muddle that up. So we're just going to add ice. And I'm going to have you pour, just like, just count to four seconds in there. Oh, you can keep going. Oh, I thought you said four. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Oh, that's a lot, I think. No, that's perfect. <laughs> So you can stir this. All right. Remember, just hold at the top like a little pencil. So I just put a little absinthe in here. We're just going to do a little absinthe rinse. Now, absinthe is pretty strong, isn't it? It is. Ours is 120 proof. But it's an old traditional French recipe. So then we're just going to slowly pour that in the glass that's rinsed with the absinthe. 
A little lemon peel in there. In there, you got a little Sazerac. Delicious. I just love drinking these, any setting, you know? It sort of brings you back. Like I'm in New Orleans or something. It, it has like a heritage kind of feel. Absolutely. The support we received in the taste room has been just beyond our wildest dreams. So we get people who are locals who live in the neighborhood, so a lot of great regulars coming in from Corktown and different neighborhoods in Detroit. We get some people who travel in, but it's always been really just a great mix of people coming in. This is one of the friendliest places in Detroit where you can come and meet people. I've probably met more interesting citizens of the city and people from other cities that come here than in any other establishment in Detroit. I love that about it because we, we produce really great cocktails, and not in a stuffy atmosphere. It's kind of like your local neighborhood bar with elevated libations. Today we're at Planet Comic Con. This is the largest comic sci-fi convention uh, in Kansas City, Missouri. We're really excited to be here. Boulevard is all about Kansas City, and we uh, a lot of nerds work at Boulevard, and we're really excited. And we're, we come to the convention on our own, so Planet asked if we would like to pour some beer, uh, sample some beer here, and uh, provide it to all the convention goers. And we uh, said yes enthusiastically. We could not wait to be part of it. But we needed something that would kind of like identify us to this crowd. And uh, a few years back, I made a really small kind of a static display robot out of our Nutcracker winter ale and that kind of spun this idea to create Optimus Prime here and it's really just hot glue duct tape empty wheat boxes uh, a lot of people have asked uh, what happened to the beer in these boxes and I told them that drinking all the beer is what gave me the idea to make this robot I will tell you my favorite part is the can launcher because the brewery was like, well, we don't want you to put a, a violent robot there. And I was like, no, Optimus Prime isn't here to kill. He's here to, he's the destroyer of thirst. Unfiltered wheat, which is what Optimus Prime is made of. That's our most well-known and beloved beer here in Kansas City. We've been uh, operating since 1989. It was the first uh, brewery to operate in Kansas City since the late 60s. Boulevard kind of dominated the scene for a long time, only because there weren't a lot of people making beer. And now I think Kansas City has like 30, 35 uh, smaller craft breweries that are making beer, and they're good. They're making really good beer. Uh, Kansas City has adopted craft beer as kind of their own, and that makes us really happy, and we're proud to be part of that. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find out more about us on our website, purebrewsamerica.com. And make sure you follow us on social media. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.